In this video, there are four types of new literacies that we will be discussing. So these are multicultural, followed by financial, then eco-literacy, and lastly, the arts and creativity literacy. Let's start with um, multicultural literacy. So when we say multicultural literacy, it means it brings attention to diversity, equity, and social justice. So if we are a multicultural literate na pagkatao, so we can address issues like discrimination and oppression towards other ethnicities. So we are able to respect or appreciate those people, those other forms no? coming from different cultures or what society do they belong. Next, we have global literacy which aims to address issues of globalization, racism, diversity, and social justice. So, kamo as a future teacher, uh, if you are global literate, it means uh, you can empower students with knowledge and take action to make a positive impact in the world and their local community. So, we have pedagogies, no? To promote global competence. So the first, we have group-based cooperative project work. So it can enhance the collaborative skills of the students. So as a teacher, you must give a certain topic or a certain thing, no? depending on their grade level or uh, year level, and then they can uh, collaborate no? with their classmates or with their peers about the theme or topic. Next, we have, of course, the class discussion. No? So, this is the common uh, way of uh, handling a class. So, this is an interactive approach that encourages proactive listening and responding to ideas expressed by peers. So, we must uh, collect no? ideas or thoughts from our students also. And then third, service learning. So, an example for this is your NSTP LTS, no? where you were assigned to a pupil and then you teach that pupil or you taught that pupil how to read, how to write, how to count. So, service learning, no? this is another tool that can help students develop multiple global skills through real-world experience. So, if you have your uh, field study also, no? where you can be able to observe Jude sa nahitabo sa real world. And we have the story circle approach which intends students to practice key intercultural skills including respect, cultural awareness, and empathy. So we are going to group the students into five or six ba and then each student no will share a story from their own experience ba diha? or from their peers or from their classmates. So those are some of the pedagogies no, to promote a global competence. Now, are you a global teacher? No? So I asked you this one if you were with me during our Ed 102 na class. So what does it mean to become a global teacher? So a global teacher the I, is a competent teacher who is armed with knowledge, skills, appropriate attitude and universal values to teach students in any place in the world. So if you are a global teacher, so you are armed, no? you have the enough skills, knowledge, and the values. So we have here a quote. No? What does it mean to become a world-class teacher or a global teacher? So being world-class does not mean going internationally and showing your best out there. Being world-class is passion and commitment to our profession. Being world-class is giving our best teaching. Being world-class starts right inside the classroom. So, if you are a global teacher, it doesn't mean na I'm a teach ko abroad. So, uh, I consider myself as a global teacher because I am here abroad, no? But a global teacher, bahalag na ara ka sa imong barrio, na ara ka sa imong barangay the teach, but... If you have this certain passion and commitment to teach to the young ones, then it means that you are labeled as a global teacher. Now, next type of new literacies is we have the financial literacy. I think this one's your favorite, no? 
So I have here questions before going to the main uh, discussion on financial literacy. So if you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? Okay, you can answer that one. The next, how do you manage your debts? So di unsa ni mo pagmanage imong utang if you have any utang. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how often do you shop online? So most students siguro mag-answer any 10 jud ma'am no. So we have here Lazada, Shopee, and for those who are working already no, I think this is the common scenario ma during payday, you have a lot of money. But 2 hours after payday, wala ni kan uno. So magpalit na lang og sudan sa gawas or ban magdilata na lang or magpansit kanton. So this is one of the reasons no why Pinoys are have, uh, are having a hard time to manage their debts or maglisod sila o save of money. So what is financial literacy di ay? So this is the ability to make informed judgments and make effective decisions regarding the use and management of money. So when you say effective decisions, so you can weigh things no if needs baninako, wants baninako. So if you are a financial literate na person, so you can handle your assets, especially cash, and while well understanding how money works in the real world. So let's identify some basic terms. I know you know this one. So income, these are money earned from various sources like salary, wages, earnings from farming or business. Then we also have expenditure or expenses. So uh, money spent by us on various items. And then there are two types of expenses. No? So we have the fixed expense. So every month, every year, they are fixed. No, They are of the same amount. So it's an example of so fixed expenses. So let's say ang imong rent sa boarding house or na kay mga student loans or kanang every month same amount lang siya, no? Or bayad ba sa bills sa kurente, bills sa internet. Flexible expenses, they include items such as food, clothing, and entertainment that vary from month to month. So, daily siya a typical or the same amount every month. So, flexible expenses, muna ni siya yung mga expenses ni mga outside sa imong budget. And then, we have here budget. So, this is an estimation of revenue and expenses and is usually compiled and re-evaluated on a periodic basis. So, I hope that if you have money, no, if you receive money, you know how to budget your money. So, here's an example on how to budget your money. So, this is the 50-30-20 budget. So, what does it mean? No? So, if you have, let's say, you have a uh, you have 1000 pesos so when you apply the 50 30 20 a budget so na kay 1000 50% of 1000 will go to your necessities so mga needs nimo food sa panadiha 30% will go to your wants so 30% so pwede nimo ilang laag uh, ikaon kaon because uh, those are your wants well, 20% will go to your savings and paying off debt. So, mag-save ka, no? So, that's the 50, 30, 20 budget. So, again, 50% to your necessities, 30% to your wants, and 20% will go to your savings and bayad sa utang. Next, we have the term investment. So, this is the deployment of money with the expectation of earning higher returns over time. So, this is investment. Then, we have the savings. Do you have your savings na ba? So, uban, uban siguro, no? Uh, ubay, ubay na ni o savings. But, in this pandemic, uh, wala well, face-to-face classes. So, uh, most of the students, they do not get their allowances, no? So, maglisod o save. Kaya wala po yung gasunod ng kwarta. So, when we say savings, this is the amount of money that was put aside for future use and can be achieved uh, when a person will spend less than what he earns. So, we can only save if we are going to spend less than what we earn or what we receive. 
So, there are two types of savings, no? So, first type, uh, when you consider your savings as a fixed expense. So, when you receive a money, unahon ko din mo dito ang ino savings. Other type or usually or commonly, uh, diri siguro mo, no? The leftover residual after all other expenses. So, if you have budgeted your money na, and what was left, maulang po na yung savings ni mo, no? But the main problem is there may not be anything left over. That's why walay savings na mahitabo. So, it's better that we consider our savings as a fixed expense. The next debt, of course, this is the utang. So, if expenses are more than the income, then we have no savings with us. Will result siya into shortage of money, which is covered through borrowing, creating debt. So we must uh, avoid having debts, no? And then the needs versus want. So of course, our needs. These are the things that you must have for survival, or while our wants, no? Uh, these are something that you would like to have, but they are not necessary, such as the latest iPhone. Mga video games, mga beauty essentials. So, we must uh, decide yun, no? If kani nga butang needs ba nina ko or sa wants ba nina ko. There are some uh, common financial scams that we have to avoid. Especially now that we are more into the online, no? Online type of learning. So, we have the phishing. So, scammers send an email that appears to come from a financial institution. Uh, I have experienced this one, no? Uh, someone from, let's say, in this example, from BPI. Now, once you click this Secure My Account, uh, they are going to get your data, personal information nimo, and worst case scenario, makuha nila ang imong kwarta or savings. So, we must be careful, no? In checking these types of emails. Next, we have the social media scams. So, they have phishing tactics like posts seeking charity donations with bogus links that allow them to keep your money. So, this is an example, no? So, uh, they are asking for donations, ko no, ang PGH. But, if you have donated something from, uh, for them, then, ka na kwarta, dili na ito mapunta sa PGH. Then, this picture on the right. So, this student, no, nga ni Viral nga, he ordered a laptop. Yeah, pag-abot sa iyong order, ang say sulod sa iyong order. So, bato, or sa panindiri, mga cardboard ba na diha, or mga woods, no? So, we must be careful, especially in ordering uh, items online. Then, the phone scams. Of course, ang phone scams, no, nga, I think since elementary, we have received these types of messages that uh, you are a lucky winner, uh, you won the lottery, or uh, you have uh, 500,000, no? so these are types of uh, mga phone scams. So, pretending that he or she is an attorney. And then, we have the identity theft. So, scammers are able to obtain personal information about you. So, in this example, no, the picture on the left, no, someone ordered from Food Panda, pila ni sila kabuok, you orderan from Food Panda, and then that person does not exist the eye. Then, the uh, picture on your right, no, here is a text message, no, pretending to be your uh, daughter or to be your mother, and then asking for a loan. So, that's identity theft. And then some strategies, there are a lot of strategies to reach a financial stability. Here are some of the strategies. So, para sa kong ingon, we must make savings automatical. So, saving should be your top priority. Next, control your impulsive spending. So, you must control yourself no, from buying those unnecessary things. Third, evaluate your expenses and live life frugally. Fourth, invest in your future. So as a student, uh, it's better no, at this early age, you have an investment already. And then fifth, 
Keep your family secure. Eliminate and avoid debt. So avoid utangs. Use the envelope system. So when you use the envelope system, you have a three envelopes. So when you apply the 50-30-20 budget, you can separate the envelope. And then pay bills immediately. So once you have received the bill, so you must pay that one immediately. Delete na kay ang paunya unya system because the tendency is mahuda na kagwarta. And then read about a finance, a personal finances, and look to grow your net worth. So here's a quote from Benjamin Franklin that beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship. Then let's proceed to eco-literacy. So what is eco-literacy? So this is the ability to understand the organization of natural systems and the process that maintain the healthy functioning of living systems and sustain life on earth. So if, you, uh, if we are eco-literate, no? So we can respect or we are able to respect, we are able to appreciate all forms of life. And we also look forward to sustainability. So there are seven environmental principles. So the first is everything is connected to everything else. So ang lahat ng bagay ay magkaugnay. So all components interact with each other to ensure that the system is, again, sustainable. All forms of life are important. So, any species panadiha, they play a fundamental role in nature. Everything must go somewhere. So, we must practice no segregation, and uh, it could help no to convert them to minerals and then absorb by plants and eaten by animals. So, uh, useful or gihapon siya, essential or gihapon siya sa society. Fourth, ours is a finite earth, so ang kalikasan ay may hangganan. So as a uh, person, no? as a human being, we must be responsible in what we do. And then fifth, nature knows best, so ang kalikasan ang mas nakakaalam. So nature manifests certain processes that enable it to maintain balance and remain in a state of equilibrium. The sixth one, nature is beautiful and we are stewards of God's creation. So the beautiful nature around us has deteriorated due to the negative impacts of human use. So again, uh, dapat responsable tang members of society. And seventh, everything changes. So changes in the biophysical world occur naturally. So those are the seven environmental principles. And lastly, we have the arts and creativity literacy. So what is arts and creativity? So this is the process of having original ideas that have value. So again, no? you have your original works, you have your original ideas. So if you are artistic and creative, uh, you are able to see the world in new ways and you can innovate something from that uh, idea or work. So how are you going to integrate arts and creativity literacy into the curriculum? So first, uh, uh, we must consider no, or we must design a physical environment that supports creativity. And not just the physical environment, the, but the emotional environment also. So we must take time to create and maintain a climate of respect, caring and support to someone when making mistakes. So instead of laughing that someone, no? so instead of magugal-bugal to that someone, uh, we must help that one or we must support him or her. And then third, we have the PBL or the project-based learning. So provide students time, space, and opportunity to express themselves themselves through arts and then you have teach creative thinking skills so metacognition what is metacognition gani so metacognition is thinking about thinking so some of these activities no that could uh, help a uh, metacognition no? 
We have brainstorming, reasoning, analyzing, problem solving, and etc. Then fifth, we have alternative assessments. So, dilit lang kay all the time traditional assessments and ang atong ihatag mo. So, for the pen and paper, mani pinaka common. So, we must provide different authentic assessment. I know you know what's authentic assessment. And then we have scheduling. So, give ample time in either structured or unstructured manner. And student-centered and personalized learning. So, I like this one. No? So, in this uh, way or process, no, uh, we must provide students the freedom to choose on what they will learn, how they will learn it, and how they will demonstrate what they have learned. And then we have to incorporate arts in all fields or, or in all areas of specialization and integrate uh, integration and technologies. Of course, you are all tech savvy. And then lastly, so prepare the body and brain for creativity. So there are activities that induce body-mind integration, pareha ng yoga, ballet, jazz, zumba, and etc. So, that's the end of my presentation. So, again, uh, this video is all about the review on multicultural, financial, eco-literacy, and the arts and creativity literacy. Thank you.